see a really respectable effort against a very good Seminoles team. Final was 73-61 to FSU. Tall task tonight for the Deeks. They're ready to give Virginia Tech their best shot. And three seconds in, we get the signal for a jump ball. Let's jump it up again. Stay. Do it again. Do it. Now, Georgia Amor was not at Virginia Tech shoot-around today. Told she had a little bit of a stomach bug, but she was game time decision. She's good to go. She's in the lineup. And she will run the Hokie offense as they win the initial tip. And I should say the second tip of the day. Well, yeah, it's good to see she's out on the court for Virginia Tech fans. She's kind of the heart and soul of this team. If they go inside and go outside, Ty Harris has got her hands full tonight. Second opportunity, and free throws are coming for the Minnesota transfer, Rose Mishaw. And look, we, we talk about Sunny Yell in the open. It's also somewhat of a homecoming for Kayla King and Liz Kittley, yeah. who, who grew up just outside of Greensboro. Yeah, right down the road. They've got a big continuum here. We obviously know the story about Liz Kittley. I mean, your dad, Ralph, was a basketball player here at Wake Forest. But, you know, one of the things that you talk about Mishaw, she's kind of the unsung hero of this basketball team. Averages about five points a game, about four rebounds. Gets a lot of weak side play. You saw that in the first possession. Kittley missing the shot. The ball's bad and she goes up and scores there. Two free throws. And she would give you a lot of heart and soul in this basketball team. Foul was called on Reagan Conley who starts her sixth straight game for Coach Debbie today alongside Harrison Williams. Scruggs and Coles. Coles does a pirouette. Goes too strong off the glass. First rebound for Kitley. First possession, Shaw was guarding Cowles. And Lake Forest has got to play tough defense. They've got to contest jump shots, but you can't get in early foul trouble in the paint. Georgia Amor, a spectacular playmaker. Hesitation, kick out. Kayla King, open three. And Harrison deflects the rebound for Coles that he can have it. It's a good possession for Wake Forest there. But Long rebound, you get the ball, and you're able to run your offense. The, the time in this game, the, the poise in Wake Forest is going to be impactful early in the game. And Wake Forest only averages about 60 points a ball game. We know Virginia Tech can score with the best of about 82 a game. What's your tempo going to be? Clearly, they're milking the clock, and now they got to fire Conley to beat the buzzer. Does not catch any iron. But the other part of that is when you make those or take those long jump shots, you've got to be able to get back. No team around here pushes the ball in transition better than this one. Friendly rims for Matilda Eck as the Michigan State transfer knocks down the corner three. Had a huge game a couple of weeks ago against Rutgers where she knocked down a season-high seven three-pointers. A streaky shooter that finds range and her side, she can get inside as well as outside. Nice play. Kai Harrison gets Wake Forest on the board. And it's okay if you Wake Forest to play tempo basketball and use the clock, but you've got to score. You have to score. You can't have empty possessions today. Eck on the drive, pulls it back out. X now made a three in eight consecutive games. Amor just phenomenal at orchestrating the offense and uh, the chemistry that she and Kitley have developed the past three years is scintillating. Yeah, there's not a lot of defense for that. Okay, so you just have to hope she misses the shot and then box her out. Kitley, five for 15 from the floor on Sunday against Pittsburgh, and the Hokies still scored 91 and yeah. hit by 50. Well, this is one of those teams, and you see them every now and then, they're a good team, they've got a lot of weapons. So if you want to stop Kidley, okay, but you got to find a way to stop this. Amor sets up Eck, burying the three, timeout, Demon Deacons. A couple assists for Georgia Amor, and she's feeling okay, and Matilda Eck, the former Michigan State Spartan, two for two from deep. 10-2, Virginia Tech, early here in Winston-Salem. Matilda Eck has found the range. An excellent catch and shoot. On the transition, push it down the floor. You've got to get back in defense, and she can go by you, but she won't. She's just going to spot and knock down three. This is what this Hokie team can do. Hokie's number one in the nation, and number one in the ACC, number two in the country in terms of made threes so far this year, over 10 a game. 
Elise Williams answers for Wake Forest. I wonder if that's what Megan Jebbia drew up. Right, Elise, go take a three and make a three. Yeah, and she's going to have to make some threes. She's got to be very offensive tonight. This is her 15th three-point basket made, but she's a solid athlete, and tonight she's got to play against the athletes, and this could be a good game for her. Coles deflects the entry pass. Inside and the other way to Kitley. Double comes. Back outside for King. Eck is the open shooter. Another offensive rebound for the Hokies, but Kitley loses it, and the game's first turnover charge for the Hokies. Kitley did a nice job recognizing the double team, and they made the skip pass across. It was a good look for Eck, but a good box out once again for Wake Forest. It came out with more pressure after the timeout. Nice pass from Scruggs, and the shot won't go for Elise Williams, but the free throws are coming. One thing Wake has to do is to continue to be aggressive. They can't sit back and be flat foot. Nice job there getting position. A nice bounce pass. One of the things we really like about Scruggs, her ability to go inside and post up, or to step out. But she's a nice passer. Good bounce pass. Williams goes to the free throw line. Foul goes against Kayla King. Olivia Samiel check into the game at the Joel Coliseum as a hokey for the first time. Melissa Andrews, the first off. Coach Jebby is bench tonight. Stan, one thing I wanted to ask you, the four and nine jumps out at you, but the Deeks are two and two in their last four after starting two and seven. Have you noticed anything the past few weeks that you feel like they're turning the corner a little bit? Making shots, more comfortable players, and accepting roles. And you just, all you gotta do is look at Scrubs. I mean, she's just stepped her game up and now finding what she does well and trying to do. This is gonna be a grind for this basketball team some night. Tonight could be that game. They've got to put a great effort in. But yeah, they're, they're kind of catching on and finding out what's going on. Matchups have been good for them. Amor finds the driving lane. Can't finish. Kitley on the glass. Tied up. Wake ball. <laughs> Alex Brooks is what I'm talking about. Last couple possessions. It, it didn't do it this time, but the possession before, Conley was matched up against Kitley. We'll see how Wake Forest continues to play that. But Kyles has got to play smart defensive-wise, and Scruggs has got to play wise. Elite Great. Williams has yeah. the game's last eight points. An 8-0 run on by herself, and we're tied at 10. I feel like this is going to be a challenge for her, like I said a moment ago. Going against really super athletes, a lot of which she knows how she's going to play against them. And then again, a lot of eyes on number 20 in the room in orange. Another offensive rebound for Kitley, and Coles fouls her from behind. Malaya picks up her first. Last couple possessions, it's been Samiel and Scruggs matched up with each other. How many times do you think they did that in practice over the last four years? I'm telling you. The thing that amazed me in watching them in warm-ups, the early warm-ups and then before the game, actually, is that I was surprised that um, Olivia didn't decide to go to the other locker room. <laughs> I wonder if she's ever been in the visiting locker room here before. Well, Kitley had it poked away. Deeks have scored eight in a row. Not keeping the ball up. She knows better. Puts it down on the floor. It's getting deflected. Chance for Wake to take it. First nice. lead. What a move. Elise Williams has taken this game over. He just felt like this could be that night. She's got him one-on-one -on -one matchups. What a great move. That time against Amor gets the easy basket. Ten points in the last two minutes for Elise Williams. And an offensive foul goes against Sunny L for the illegal screen. Watch this, Evan, and again, playing with some passion, being athletic. Camille gets caught with the illegal screen, but watch this move right there. Good there, little head and shoulder, take it inside, kissed off the glass. Being very aggressive. And notice the whole side, oh. each side was open for him. Nobody home at the top of the key. The pass went to Jordan, and she had already started her cut. That's Wake's first turnover. Over five minutes into the game, Deeks averaging over 15 turnovers a game. So a good start in that department. A little high-low, Samiel to Kitley. And the foul's going on, Scruggs. Number one on the grad student from Fayetteville. She passed by Lakevia Boykin, who held the all-time Wake Forest games played record. Certainly an asterisk in these times. It's her fifth season playing college basketball, but it's a common thing in this day and age. 
Kai is going to pass it to Kylie at number two. Yeah. Time. This is said and done. So. Today's 127 for Kaya. Hokies are excellent at the line. You can shoot 81% and also lead the league. Three-point baskets made. That lets you know they're getting great looks. They're moving the basketball. Kidley gets involved that time, brings it down. Again, Wake Forest has got to be able to match some possession, possession. Scruggs will take it. Okay, she's got that one out of her system now. Let's keep moving. But it's a good look, and she's going to be able to get that shot. Whoever Kitley's guard is going to be able to get the ball, keep the line extended to the top of the key. What you do with the ball, that's on you. Great hands by Williams. This is the best Williams has played early all season. Complete game, defensively as well as offensively. Amor up top for Samuel. Three second violation. We're seeing some signs of frustration from the Hokies here in these past Well, they, you're right, and they're settling to their half court sets and they're not moving. So many times you go in the ball, go to the post, the kid she gets a double, she kicks it out, she goes in and she scores, and that's not happening quickly, and they're just kind of standing around watching. But that's good defense by Wake Forest. Sure was. Madison Jordan comes up short, gets her own miss. Back outside the Scruggs. Deeks don't need to be in a hurry. Harrison pestered by Emore. Seven to shoot. Ty Harrison takes it. Good look. Again, side was clear for Harrison that time to go to the right. She's got to knock that shot in. Another friendly rim for Georgia Amor. Amor. <laughs> I mean, she just, you know, you can sit there and talk about the numbers. I just love her poise. She just makes plays. It's two of their three threes that have rattled, rattled around, around and ironed. Uh, Samuel has made the iron kind here in her old home for her new team. Double dribble is called on F. She tried to advance the ball after securing the rebound. Carly Wenzel into the game. Talented freshman from San Antonio. Really solid. Just a different level of confidence and aggressiveness yeah. so far today from Elise Williams. You're talking about Elise Williams, who can score, leads the team in, in, in assists, believe it or not. He's only had five games in double figures. You can make that six now. Great defensive play there. And they're going to call it on Olivia. And I'm not sure about that. She can't believe it either. That's her second foul. She's just a couple minutes on the floor. Shaw's coming back into the game. As is King. Watch this pass in the wing, gets in the passing lane. Good job by the freshman. I see, I see the foul on somebody else. He grabbed the arm. Yeah, but yes. <laughs> Not exactly a welcome home call. Williams again looking to attack. Scruggs on the glass. And a foul is going on Kitley. Sometimes you can win matchups. Right now, the matchups in the post, the matchups of being aggressive, are all going Wake Forest way. And they're attacking Kitley, trying to you know make her make some plays. She's not in an offensive rhythm, and and so you just kind of see who's going to keep making plays. Sure. Scruggs bounces back with a second, ties the game, 15 apiece. Scruggs to the bench, Riley Turkoff makes her first appearance of the day. Katie Diebel has also entered the game for Megan Jevia. Deeks had a one point lead at the end of one in Tallahassee on Sunday. High game here, under two minutes to play in the first. 
Lake Everson, 14 and a half points in the first quarter alone. So doing a nice job early getting some scores. There's a weak side shot. Nishaw rebounds the Strack miss. Kitley picks up the foul, must be nice. Kenny Brooks to bring another 6'5 freshman, Clara Strack. <laughs> and Kenny told me today he thinks Strack is further along now yes. as a freshman than Kitley was when she was a freshman. Got a hand on the ball there. I said, I find that hard to believe. He's like, well, people are just aren't seeing it because they're not getting a chance. But you watch her in practice. She's doing things that Liz couldn't do as a freshman. Well, she does a little things. I mean, that right there, she got a hand on that ball, got a little slide block, runs down, doesn't get the shot. But, but it's, it's just the development, and she's playing against the best. So she's going to get better. Or you'd like to think so, anyway. Now it's supposed to work. Hokies by two. Amor for three. Strack on the glass. One dribble, put back two. Good Fall alive, didn't foul, gathered herself, put it down with the power dribble, kissed it off the glass. Only averaging four points a game, but making an impact on the defensive end and limited minutes. And that this season is probably going to be how she's going to get her minutes. Williams has 12 points. She's four for five. The rest of the Deeks are one for ten. Williams kicks it. Three at the buzzer is wide left for Madison Jordan. And we will take a break. One down. Bell of the 15 points. At least Williams has for the Deeks. Deeks trail by eight early. They're back within four. Kitley, elbow jumper. She practices that with Kenny Brooks every single day. And you can tell it because she's very comfortable with that little 12-footer on both sides of the floor and the pop-out for the wing. There's a moment late in the shoot-around today where all members of the Virginia Tech basketball team except Kitley were shooting free throws at one end. She was at the other end practicing footwork and 12-foot jumpers with Brooks. You know, she got the ball to her this time at the top as opposed to a low block. Speaking of blocks, in transition, it's Paris Baker from downtown. The freshman from West Hartford gives Virginia Tech its largest lead of the night. Another one of these young, solid athletes from Virginia Tech. They force a turnover. Baker comes in 8 out of 15 in their last four ball games. Off the miss in transition, finds a wing. The left handy knocks it down. Virginia Tech's fourth three-point basket made so far in this ball game. Evan. That's what they do. It is. Yeah. Attempted nine threes, only attempted seven twos so far. You think they have the best post player in the country, maybe. That wouldn't be the case, but they, they get the ball inside, too. They don't forget about her. But that's what makes them so good is because you have the best post player in the country. So you want to take her away, fine. you got to give up something, and they're and sure shooters. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, how, how you how you want to get beat down? It's an 11-0 run spanning the quarters after Wake came back to tie it. Riley Turkoff ricks one long, and here's Amor taking it the other way. And Deeks have got to get back and stop the basketball and look for the stop and the weak side shot. There's a post. Second foul on Coles. Remember early in the game, they were using Kitley on the low block. Now, in the last couple possessions, they've, they've widened the floor, so you're in a one-on-one -on -one battle against her. You can throw over the top and get it to her, and she flashes. That time she flashes and picks up the foul. So they have different ways, and because of what you said earlier about watching her take those number after number after number of mid-range shots, she's very comfortable in a lot of spots on the court. Olivia Semiel's back into the game, playing with the two fouls here in the first half. Amor in the corner. Rebounded by Samia. How many times we see her do that in a Deacon jersey? Kitley can't connect on the second chance. Did two out of the last three games that Samia's played, she's got double doubles. and just erupted against Rutgers before Christmas. So, I mean, you know, she's doing Olivia things, but in a different uniform. Yep. Nice little step back move. Jordan can't connect. Scruggs sneaks in for the rebound and just can't find any daylight against Elizabeth Kitley. Yeah, it's going to be hard to score when Kitley's moving as well as she is right now. And just kind of go inside and just wait for the ball to get up, and then she just blocks it. <laughs> the advantage of being 6'6". 
Yeah, I wouldn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How tall are you, Stan? I'm six I'm six seven. Here's on my back. Somebody asked me that today, as a matter of fact. It was me. No, no, no. Five seconds to go. Scruggs missed it. Williams rising up. Got a hand on the rebound, but was boxed out from holding on to it. Kitley inside. Yeah. Two more. That's all day. Timeout. Wake Forest. 13-0 run for Virginia Tech. Number 13 ranked team in the country, Roland here in Winston. What even is this? Don't touch my things, gross. Janice, when you buy... <laughs> the two-time ACC Player of the Year with 65 double-doubles. She might have number 66 before halftime, Stan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not... I'm just telling the things. You you throw it up there, I'm going to hear Yeah, she can probably have 66. Before halftime? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four more rebounds. It's already got, what, 10? Six rebounds, 10 points. Yeah. Williams has cooled off a little bit after a sizzling start. And they get Williams for the tug, trying to guard Kipling underneath. It's a tough matchup for Elise. And I guess if you're Virginia Tech, you've seen it all, how you want to defend Kidley. They can run your offense so many different ways to get the ball to other players that can make plays, and then, okay, fine. So they're going four round one, basically. And you've got to be able to guard Kidley, and you can't you can't stop that. And the weak side is going to be open for the shooter as well. Some of y'all haven't taken a shot yet. Got two rebounds and assists and two fouls in our homecoming game back to Wake Forest. And another late whistle, but it's going to be a foul against the Deeks. Well, you know, this is a hard position for her to be in. She's excited to be back. I mean, she sees a lot of... She's, I've seen her on campus myself a couple of times already, and she's, you know, she wants to do well, and I didn't expect it to be a big school, but rebounds, defensive, she's going to do that. that. That always travels. A lot of misdirection, and X said, I'll take it. Yeah. 15 straight points for the Hokies. After Wake, who was down 10-2 early, came back to tie it up. Scruggs just picked up her second foul, but Kevin didn't have too many options. No, Down no. 15. Harrison trying to squeeze it through. It's tough to do. Stay Wake ball. Diebel's coming back in for the Deeks. Watch this now. Post up. Everybody just kind of goes away like, where are you going? And Reagan Conley was on the wrong side. Got to take the baseline first, and then hesitation, boom, just an easy layup by Eck. And again, you know, you look at this, you look at this Virginia Tech team, you've got three transfers in your top seven, top eight, and then you got a lot of freshmen, and you got some veterans, you got three veteran players. The veterans are st steady. When the season started, only three members of this Hokey roster had ever played a minute for Kenny Brooks. Exactly. But they're so they're they're three pillar players, obviously. Kitley, Amor, and King. Twelve points, seven rebounds. Hokies back up 15. But you bring in veteran players with the transfers. You know, Michelle being one of those, Olivia being another, X being another. And you complement those with those veteran players that you said the pillars. And so very it natural sense. replacement exactly. for Taylor Soul and Kayana Trailer. Exactly. Who they lost. Two other transfers that Kenny Brooks had brought in. You think the parts all fit? How you play, culture, what you're trying to establish. It don't hurt to have her on the team. Count it <laughs> and the foul. Are they going to wave off the basket? No basket. And the Hokie fans in attendance cannot believe it. She's the program's all-time leader in points, rebounds, field goals, blocks, double-doubles, and more. She's trying to become the fifth player in ACC history, men's or women's basketball, to win three straight Player of the Year awards. Alana Beard, Alyssa Thomas, David Thompson, Ralph Sampson. Two of them got uh, statues named after the other two. 
<laughs> Their name's up in the rafters, just I know. <laughs> so, hey. I think it's a safe bet. Kitley's name will hang in the rafters. And get a trophy Castle and a Coliseum. statue named after it, too. How about that? <laughs> and look, Ken Hoover recruited Elizabeth Kitley. And going back to when Liz's dad, Ralph, was yeah. a student athlete at Wake Forest, Jen Hoover was a player on the women's basketball team at the same time. Jen and Ralph were friends, but yeah. friends to this day. But it was Kenny Brooks that developed the relationship. There's, there's, there's Ralph. Ralph. Forest center for three years there, Bob Stack. One year under Dave Odom. Played 100 games in a Wake Forest jersey. Oh, yeah. Star down the road right here. We're growing. But, uh, I, you know, yeah, but <laughs> that's odd, isn't it? Kenny Brooks said that he started watching Kitley play in ninth grade. She was kind of a late bloomer. Didn't start playing exclusively basketball until eighth or ninth grade. But he, he was in on Kitley early, believe. I mean, obviously, Kitley and Kinane, Alyssa Kinane, who was a star for NC State, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. close friends and you know, similar players coming out of the Greensboro area. And don't forget about Kayla King. I'm not forgetting about her. There you go. And so... Defenses that forget about her and regret it. <laughs> Never. Nice. Nisha knocks it away. You gotta snap that pass. You gotta come meet that play. Great defensive effort again. The things that kind of go unsung, Misha is not afraid to do. Andrews passed up the shot. Williams goes to work on X. Pretty well defended by the Swede. Wenzel, an explosive playmaker. We've seen her make some impressive moves off the dribble. You know what's funny about this? You see that position. We haven't talked much about Amy. No. And she's only got five assists and no turnovers. There's assist number six for Amy wow. in the third three and a half for Matilda Eck. That was from this angle, you can just see that developing and there's a take the baseline. You don't get the pass back. Eck is in great position and that's not the shot. That was well executed. Obviously, there have been a lot of great players in this league over the past couple of decades. A lot of great point guards in this league. I, I don't know if there's anybody I put ahead of Georgia Amor. The player that she is now, the way she reads the game, how she can score and facilitate for others. And there's an example of creating space on the drive. Missed his shot, surprisingly. Williams sets up the freshman, Jordan. She just made a move. Amy just made that move where she went and spun back. You don't see that in any level of basketball. It was just so comfortable. And that got her open. She just missed a shot. That was a heck of a move right there. Oh, stick the line. Yep. Backcourt violation. Only Wake's third turnover. I feel like if I had told you, Stan, three minutes to go in the half, Wake's only going to have three turns. You think, oh, they're probably right in the game. Three turns and Williams had 12 points early. But uh, Williams, four for seven from the floor. The rest of the team is two for 22. 13 for Kitley, 11 for Eck. Those two are outscoring the Deeks by themselves. Got it. And an offensive foul on Clara Strack, the freshman from Buffalo, picks up her first. This one played by Deeble. You take the baseline cut and just stand there and try to defend. Surprised you don't see more of that out of a team like this because of the fact they sent such big cutters there. Took the offensive foul. Alyssa oh, Andrews, confidence stroke. Well, that's what we were talking about. Whoever's playing that four or five spot going to be able to top, take down some nut night jump shots, if possible. Good look by Andrews. This is seven three of the year. Three of those threes came against North Carolina a and back in November. Kayla King in and out. Strack on the glass. Back to King. Reload. Bucket. Are you, you kidding me with that rim? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> That, that's the third one. we got to get a reel of all three of the <laughs> kind iron moments here in the first half for Virginia Tech shooters. So how about Kayla King? Gets the rebound and immediately kicks it to the wing. Here we go in transition. Amor the steal, the lefty no. 
On the glass, it's Misha and one. And all the names that we've called and all the things that each player does well. Do your job. Misha plays defense. Weak side rebounder. Takes it down. You missed a shot. Misha comes on the weak. Gets the rebound. You got to box her out. Amor get, an, Amor get an assist for that? Nah, I don't think so. Because she didn't draw iron. But I love it. But they get like that, though. I mean, just do your job. The only thing the Hokies haven't done well so far is shoot free throws. Yeah. They're just five for nine. That's a very surprising 55.5%. Considering their top five in the country from the line this season. And taking away that first move by Williams, the last couple of possessions, a bigger player making her work. She's pulled away from the basket now. Diebel forced to fire. Rebound for Eck, quickly to Amor. Cross-court pass intercepted. Amor's first turnover of the night. Williams for two more. Nice. 14 for Elise in the half. Good decision that time by Williams not to put the ball or hand it to anybody else keep making the play. Kitley fouled by Jordan. What, what, what? Okay, this is a long cross-court pass. You didn't see the defender. Watch this. Eyes up, head up, take your time. There's a crossover. And just continue to attack. A little contact right there, play through. I was going to ask you, what do you think it's like for Madison Jordan, freshman from Morrisville, North Carolina, playing against Elizabeth Kitley, who's you know, played 134 college basketball games entering today, 134 starts, over 2,000 points. ACC's all-time leading rebounder, final four. I mean, you think she got time to process all that? <laughs> well, do you think she approaches it any differently? Do you no. Think there are different nerves going no, against someone no. with Kitley's stature. No, because one, she's not going to guard Kitley very much. Secondly, they played against each other at some point in time in AAUs. You played them, and then third, you got to play. The heck with her. You worry about yourself. Nah, it's nice. It's not like it's not like sitting here the very first time as a broadcaster you want to live lip. I mean like can you imagine the knees knocking on a person and not be able to did you, did you just compare me to Liz Kitley in terms of my achievements? Yeah. yeah I did. It seems spot on. Yeah. Yes I do. Fifty seconds left in the half. When you're around sit around it like great but you have to raise your level. Right. Why you're so good. You work with me. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. Williams has She's raised her level. Tonight. Tied her season high. Had it against Charlotte early in the year and also against Davidson with 16. And this is what we were expecting out of Williams this season. Scoring the basketball. Where would the Deeks be without her this evening? Kitley. Foul's going on Eck. Liam McWhorther getting some time. Only played about... 15 minutes all season long coming back after some injuries and so you really don't know what she can do. She can run the floor, I know that, and it's been a good spot shooter, so it's good to see her out on the court see what she can do. Number four. And Gruggs picked up her third, Conley and Coles each on the bench with two, so Warder gets a chance. Shot clock's off here. Williams had I think it's fair to say the best half of her Demon Deacon career. Good question. And more. 18 points in the half to match a career high. And Amor did not get it off to beat the buzzer. Williams, if there is a such a thing. Caleb King's getting an early assignment. And a late whistle. You're going to get King or Kitley. They call it on King. That's her second. Elise Williams right back to where she left off. She's twice scored 18 points in her career. Last time was December of 2022 against Charlotte. Season high 16 against Charlotte this year. And Elise's new career high, 19 and counting. And we were saying it earlier when she was on the part of that role. This is what we kind of expected and looked for. That consistent score so far for the Deeks this year. Now, if she can continue this run, it's going to help Wake Forest more because other people are going to have some balance offensively to score as well. You guys get other baskets. It's a matchup. No good for Kitley. 
But two Hokies were there for the offensive rebound. Mishaw took it away from X and then banked it home. That's exactly how the first half started for Virginia It Tech. certainly is, and Kidley's so comfortable in the post. He just keeps the ball up, misses the shot, doesn't even worry about it because Mishaw's on the backside and just banging, 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 scores. Harrison nice. quiet tonight, but that'll get her going. Her second bucket, chance for a three-point play. Kaya Harris, so that first step right there gets by you, gets your shoulders there, kisses off the glass, an excellent free throw shooter. If you can get the penetration by Harris in those baskets and get Williams working to the hole, some good things can happen for the Wake Forest offense, not only in this game, but the remainder of the season. The thing about it, we haven't talked about Malia Cole scoring in the paint either. She's only been able to get the yeah. ball inside once. She's got one field goal attempt, no points, one rebound in seven minutes. Makes an impact on the defensive end, gets a deflection, but Hokies maintain possession. Good ball movement. Eck going baseline to the corner. Amor finds some space, buries the jumper. You said it. <laughs> Great ball movement. One side to the other, goes in the middle of the floor, weak side ready, and she could have taken the jumper, but drives inside, takes a little easy 12-footer. At least nine points in every game this year. Georgia Amore just has five so far tonight. Scruggs going to work on Mishaw for two. Spacing, floor open, looks Alex Scruggs the opportunity to go inside and score. Now you're talking about Amor. Think about back in early this season, the second game of the year against Iowa, where she went head to head with Caitlin Collins, knocked down 31 in that ball game. Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark. What else? Like Caitlin Collins. <laughs> Too much CNN. <laughs> you knew who I was talking about. I did, and so did everybody else. 49-32 is Kitley now at 17. The, on the fact night. that I can recall names this time of year, early in the year, like I'm impressed with myself. You don't need to worry about that. <laughs> How much fun a lot was the final four last year with, you know, I mean, obviously the Hokies only two losses this year to the two teams that were in the final. Yeah. Iowa and LSU. Women's basketball. That's great. why that NC State game is so big. Not trying to look past this game. I tried to look past it with Kenny Brooks earlier today, and he said, if we don't get through tonight, we're not going to get to Sunday. Exactly. Tough shot. Well, the thought that she was feeling bad, you can throw that away. She's been a lot better. Ease into the ball game. But yeah, that was, a, that was a great run for Virginia Tech last year, their first trip to the Final Four. Tough shot. Kaya Harrison gets it to go. You know, Harrison is stronger than you think. She gets in the paint. She's got strong hands and arms. She gets up. She gets contact. Think about how many times she gets foul driving or even finishes a play there. Hitley met by Scruggs on her way to the rim. And I'm going to call it Wake Forest ball. The first miss of the half for the Hokies. Some yells coming back in. No points tonight for Olivia in her homecoming game. Two rebounds and one assist. She did pick up two fouls and only played eight minutes and a half because of it. She's averaging about 17 and a half minutes per game. Kenny Brooks said after the pit game that she's really just starting now to feel comfortable in the system. 10 points, 11 rebounds is her average over the past three. Battling with her ex teammate Scruggs inside. And we got a three second violation on Alexandria Scruggs. And you saw, you, I hate to, you, you gotta watch Olivia today. It's just old time, but as soon as the three second you saw her officiating, remember we talked about just the talk, and always talking, always constantly in motion. And like you said, she's gotten so comfortable the last couple of ball games and just exploded. The three point basket made against Rutgers, four of them. She's just playing. Offensive foul on Kitley, threw a little shoulder into Scruggs, battling for position. That's two on Liz. Yeah, it was fun to visit with Olivia's dad, Dave. Yeah, big day. The game today. Uh, Sumiel, hello. Very uh, make the fam trip. familiar face here at the Joel College. Thinking about you. Recent years. And uh, Dave Sumiel was at Wake's men's basketball game on Tuesday, yeah. Chestnut Hill. To Olivia's boyfriend, Kane Hildreth, who's sitting in the front row here. 
Looks like a lot of basketball, but the foul's going on King, and it's her third personal. He throws for Elise on the way. There's Cam. Cam. Okay. We, 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 we are putting it out there. Yeah, the stars. I'm not. I'm not. You know. Are you going to complain about the seven-footer Efton Reed? Yeah, over here. Sitting in front of you? Yeah. So you're six, 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 seven. Yeah, but it don't matter. He's still sitting in front of you. you tell him. He's okay. There's Stan. He's there's, good. There's, there's, there's I can see over him. But he was knocking their monitor and stuff over me. And he goes, hey, after, uh, don't, you have to, don't know. When you're seven yeah. foot, seven one. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Damn. I see 11. It's great to be back courtside. Great to be at a game with you. <laughs> you are in really good spirits today. I'm, I'm just, I'm so happy. First game of the new year? It is, isn't it? It is. Top ranked team. Geeks looking for the upset. And really playing good basketball. It was a four point game at the end of yeah. one. Hope he's led by 17 and a half. Oh, what a pass by Ingham. Falling to the hardwood. Sets up the Sunny L jumper. Kitley with her ninth rebound. Now she's got 19 points to go with her. So easy. So easy. Harrison. Ooh, had it stolen away, but a foul will negate the theft. Amor with a grin on her face. Did they get Georgia with a reach-in foul? They did. Signal with the bump rather than the reach. Send Harrison to the line. 15 foul in the Hokies. Deeks could shoot a lot of free throws here these next five minutes, 40 seconds. Won't matter if they don't make them. There you go. Very rare to see Kaya. She missed a couple on Sunday in Tallahassee. Still up around 86% for the season. Top five in the conference of weight team. Uh, she's about, what, 72%. But you can make some free throws, get a couple stops. Danielle sets the screen. There we go. Pop, that's her shot. Seen that a few times. And did not go for it, though. A two-person game that time with Danielle and Baker. Oh, nice move, Williams to the bucket. Two more. This is what we've been waiting for all season for Elise Williams. Slipped it, goes up, uses the glasses. Best game of her career, her 81st game as a deke. She's got 24 points and counting. Midway through the third quarter. Kyle's a banger. Third banger. Just think about all, all the bruises Liz Kitley has endured with the best post in the ACC grappling for position. Meanwhile, Georgia Amor, a highlight maker, if you've ever seen one, like Dirk Nowitzki off one foot. The warp rift is expanding, all worlds within the Calaxian veil. Williams having her best game of her college career, but currently getting worked on by Wake Forest athletic trainer Scott Spernoga. There was a kind of an awkward collision of the knees between Eck and Williams. Watch the top of your screen. At the top of your screen. And you can see right there that the, the collision happened before then. And hopefully it's just a little cramp. But she's on the bench right now as play resumes. Into Kitley. Down goes Harrison. And it's an offensive foul on Liz Kitley. Kenny Brooks can't believe it. The Virginia Tech bench is screaming at Ashley Gloss. And Kidley can't believe it. You were just talking about them before we went to break about the number of times she's getting bumped and pushed and filled and whatnot in the post and just trying to be big and make the play. And sometimes the defender's underneath and that's the advantage, disadvantage of being 6'6", I guess. Wide open three, knocked down by Katie Diebel. Don't look now, but the Deeks are within 11. I mean, at the beginning of the season, Diebel was a hot shooter, had those three three-pointers against Wofford. Hasn't really made as many, but that was a huge one, not only for the team, but for the conference. Entry pass easily intercepted. It was a bad throw and stolen by Coles. A bucket here would make things mighty interesting, wouldn't it? Harrison. Yes, indeed. It just got interesting. Harrison's ability to penetrate and take that little mid-range, that little 8 to 10-foot shot in the paint. Deacons have trailed by as many as 21. 
Off the miss, rebound, Malaya Coles. An 8-0 run, 12-2, going back further than that. Diebel drives on Baker and scores going glass. 10-0 run for the Deeks, and Kenny Brooks has seen enough. We love our house. Great location, quiet street. Defense is not always the most exciting thing to talk about, but you look at what Megan Jebbia's defense has done against some of the top offenses in the country over the past couple of weeks, holding Marshall to 59, holding Florida State to 73. And right now, I don't know if I'd say Virginia Tech is struggling, but Wake is hanging with them. Me Shaw, the target of the play out of the timeout to get the Hokies back on track. Nice way to quiet a run. Deeks has made 10 of their last 10 shots. Is that good? Malaya Coles will get to the free throw line. Looking for her first points of the night. Really nice execution. Virginia Tech after that timeout. You're talking about the court production. I mean, you got, think about this. Wake Forest has only given up about 63 points of ball game. So they... Collectively, they've done a good job playing great team defense, and they've only allowed over 73 times this season. So I love their effort. They just haven't been able to match team scoring. Tonight, at least, at least Williams has got some points on the board, and hopefully she's going to be able to return soon. And you've seen some baskets out of Kaya Harrison. So, again, I, I like the upside of this Wake Forest basketball team, irrespective of what happens in this ball game. You know, everybody does – what they have to do. This is a pretty decent basketball team, just kind of like what we said with these guys. Their defense is going to keep them in games. Yeah. And if they can get an Elise Williams performance like what we've seen tonight, they can hang with the best teams in this league. What is it? They only have six turnovers so far in this ball game. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. There's your formula right there. And Williams is going to return. That's good news for Wake. She's got half of their points. 24 of the 48. Doesn't look too worse for wear. Amor gets it into Misha, right back to Georgia. Yossi point guard. Rebounded by Wake's Aussie point guard, Katie Diebel. Williams. Diebel for three. Take that time by Williams. Everybody stands around and looks deep over. We told you, a very good spot shooter. Found the spot at the top of the key. Buries a three-point. Evil's got eight. Wakes back within four after trailing by 21 earlier in this quarter. Amor comes up short. Samiel creates another chance for the Hokies. Deep three. That's what she does. That's what she does. That's what Jamil does, and that's what Haymore does. <laughs> Just a back-breaking shot, and it's Samiel who creates the opportunity for Amor. Chance opportunities are there. No good for Williams. Samiel grabs another rebound, her fourth of the night. He cuts it within four, gets a miss, but Samiel's rebound changes the game. Remember that moment. Nishaw. Fouled by Coles. Could be Williams, too. Take your pick. Going on Coles, number three. Watch this again. You know, you got to have ball movement to make the play. That's the shot a moment ago, and the bench is excited. Well, it should be. People are stepping up. Watch Amor just kind of spots, gets the finds of rhythm, knocks it down. Not a lot you can do about it, player. He just got to come up there and contest it. Hope she doesn't miss. How about this? You know, you look at King, who's been kind of quiet today. Amor and Eck coming in this ball game. With, what is it? 124 three point baskets that they made, which leads the ACC. They've combined to make 88 of them. So you know where the perimeter shooting is going to come from. And I do you want to get beat down by the post player, the two time ACC player of the year, going for number three? For just the second time this year, Rose Misha has scored double figures. 
12 against Houston Christian, her best game as a Hokie, arguably tonight against an ECC opponent when they needed it. Scruggs goes at me, Sean. Uh, yeah. With a left hand. Do your work, Alex. Do your work. Took her time, went back to her strong side, which is the left, kissed it off the glass. Six point game, final 73 seconds of the third. Good switch there. Kitley on the bench right now. Amor's opportunity to create another deep contested three. She cracks down her own miss in the corner, fires again and hits it. Second chance opportunity. That's a bad girl right there. Georgia Amor. Deep thunder from down under. <laughs> and the Hokies are back up nine. You've been waiting to use that all year. I like that. I've used it before. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use it. End this deal. I can imagine that. Final 30 seconds of the period. About a nine and a half second difference between the game and shot clock. We switch. We've seen Amor take over so many games throughout her career. Amor fakes it. Takes it. Feeds it to Misha with three. Misha. Boys. And the double-digit lead back up to 11 for Virginia Tech. Williams lets it fly short. Rebound, Andrews, buzzer beater, goes! And Wake with it, nine, heading to the fourth. 25, 25, 33, and 50. 50, 50 this past Sunday. Nine-point game as we head to the fourth. Kitley gets it back to 11. Post turn over that shoulder, that's going to be an easy one. If you look at that 29 points, most obviously in a quarter this year, but they're averaging about 14 and a half points in the third quarter of ball games alone. What a great offensive explosion for the Deeks. 29 points in the third today. Andrews, Scruggs, Williams, Harrison, Diebel. Hand check foul. Caleb King's got four. Well, let's don't forget about the end of that quarter. Andrews getting that loose rebound having the confidence to make that little mid-range jump shot. And these are the things that, like I said, sometimes when you're playing against a team that maybe on paper is a little better and comes in with that number beside your name, you raise your level and you find out some things you can do or been maybe afraid to. Today they've been playing very loose, playing very solid basketball. Williams takes it. Makes it. Yeah. Yeah. This 27. Is the first time I've seen her play with that, that swag and that nastiness that she played with when she was in Wakefield Hospital back in the day. Good to see. No question about it. Kitley battling for position, pivots, no good. Andrews does the job. Wake down eight with the ball. Inside Scruggs. Going to work on Kitley, who's playing with three fouls. The left. <laughs> Alexandria Scruggs. It was going to happen. You just didn't know how long it was going to take. But you knew which was going to do that. Good pivot area there. Drop step, a little McHale move, kind of a little semi step through it. Count it. Aim on. <laughs> Money. Man. 15 for Georgia, along with eight assists. 30 minutes. Will she be a candidate for the Australian national team in the Olympics? If she's not. I mean, they're, they're foolish. Yeah. Kaya Harrison. Air ball. She's Diebel in the back. Pretty, pretty tough. Isn't it? Just thinking. Watch any uh, tennis last few days from Australia? Not yet, Season but I know the old, yeah, I saw my girl. I saw Osaka. She's back. I was wondering who your girl was. Coco was playing. Coco was playing. Yeah, I like Coco too. The dog's back. Osaka. Good stuff. Yeah, it's going to be some late nights coming soon. Yeah. Open's coming. I'll see you. Eck on the drive. Doesn't get the bounce. This iron has not been nearly as friendly to the Hokies as the one the Deeks are now attacking. To our right. Let's see how this trip is going to be for the Deeks. Spacing. Get the one-on-one -on -one matchup you want. Williams, tough fadeaway. Won't go for it. Kitley grabs her 10th rebound of the day. She's officially got double-double number 66. Williams and 
He's banging. There's a lot of oh, defensive defense play. Defense by Williams. She just had a different verve tonight, a different energy. Using the scrub screen. Taking it right to Kitley, and it won't go down. Debbie took a look at the ground, as if to say, can't believe that one didn't fall. What a great defensive play. Got to get the ball up in the air. High, hard angle, good back. Good defense one time, that time by Andrew. You can see the Hokies game plan is to get Liz touches inside and oh, yeah. understand it, but the last couple passes have not worked out. Well, the first one was a little too low. You just got to throw, you can't imagine how high you throw the ball to her to give them the defender. Good defensive play by Williams. That was a bad angle that time in the block. Showing a little bit of a zone right now. Wake Forest has struggled shooting threes. He's surely 27%. Eight six tonight. Right around their season average. Gets it to the free throw line. That's how you beat a zone. Back rim for Williams. Lease is now 9 for 17. 3 for 5 from deep. She's got a career high 27 points. You're Virginia Tech. You're just settling in. Don't worry about the, trying to get the blowout win. Another, hard pass. another entry pass defended beautifully by Andrews. She, she knocked it away. And she did a really good job, Evan, of, of timing it. So the ball is in the air. She got away from the body and then reached around. Under six minutes to play. Wake trying to get it back to a six-point game. Andrews traveled. She had it at the rim and just couldn't make the clean catch. She was a little hesitant. She said, okay, I think I'm going to cut. And then, oh my God, she did cut, and then just couldn't get the foot to go down. But that's something you keep in your bag if you wait for later on in this final ball, in this final few minutes. Here we go. Amor inside to Kitley. And that was interesting. Wenzel brought it up the floor, allowed Amor to be the shooting guard trigger yeah. off a cut. And there was a miscommunication there. So two people ran at the ball, and how do you forget Kidley? That's an easy post entry. Ninth assist for Amor. Williams. Harrison didn't want it. Elise had it poked away, but it was kicked from Kitley, and she knew it. A versatile athlete, Stan. She played a lot of sports growing yeah. up. Yeah. Two-time state champ at Northwest Guilford. You didn't see her play in high school, did you? A little bit, a little bit. I knew, I knew her dad was the principal there. And, you know, they're, they're pretty darn good. <laughs> they're pretty darn good. Oh, what a move by Alexandria Scruggs. You know, Scruggs finds a way. And, and for years, we tried to find where does she fit best. Just had Nick post it. Just let her post up and just let her do her work. Reaching foul on Harrison. It's just Wake's first team foul in the fourth. 4.55 to play. Eight point game. These are my tissue box covers. <laughs> Remember, tissues come in their own boxes. It's important. Graphic on the left side of your screen. Only two teams have reached 80 against the Hokies this year. That was Iowa and LSU. 10 and 0 when they hold their opponents under 80. Wake at 62 right now. In half a quarter to play. Amor. That's filthy. <laughs> what a shot. Mid range, step back, knock it down after a timeout, take your heart away. You're talking about scoring points. Wake's only scored over 70 points two times this year. So finding a way to get some points you know, with 420 is the most important thing. Scores and stops if you're a deep fan. Back in the zone for the Hokies. Harrison for two. Work it around, penetrate. There's a spot that you can go to if you're Kaya Harrison. You're not going to be able to get that close at times she was able to. McForest right now shooting 70% here in the second half. Keep in mind, Coles is playing with four fouls. Scruggs with three for Wake Forest. King's got four for Virginia Tech. Double come. Deedle gets a lot of ball, and it's a jump ball, and the arrow belongs to the Deeks. Watch Amor. Work it, work it, work it. Not bad defensive effort by Williams, but a better shot. Step back. And watch this. 
penetrate, split the defender. Nice job of kind of sealing out by Coles. Gives her a lane to get the basket. 11 points for Harrison, one of three deeps and double figures. With Williams leading the way. She's got 27. That's short corner right there. And then post repost. There you go. Grudge lost it, but it's tracked down by Kaya in the corner. Coles back outside for Williams. I'd love to see Elise hit 30. Take your time. Harrison going to have to shoot it. Got it! Great job by Harrison to recognize how far he can go. He's been working over his 12-foot jumper. And the Bears at that time has been. Two possession game late in the fourth, just like Sunday in Tallahassee for the Deeks. Playing with a couple top 25 teams at the start of conference play. But Virginia Tech has Georgia Amor. And nobody else does. 19 and 9 for Amor. And her stardom just continues to get brighter and brighter and brighter. there, but she wasn't playing yet. She came a semester early, and Kenny Brooks just pointed her out and said, she's going to be really, really good. And, like, you know, she looked small. She looked young. I'm like, okay, Kenny, whatever you say. Yeah. That guy knows what he's talking about, Sam. Yeah, no question Maybe more than me and you. Maybe. Well, that's debatable. Then he knows more than you, man. Elise step back, foot on the line. It's a good two-point jumper. And Elise has 29 tonight. He's hanging around, 74, 68, two and a half to go. What a great effort by Elise Williams. What a great game this has been. Yeah. Hokies led by 21 late second quarter. It was a 17-point game of the half. Lake scored 29 in the third, their highest scoring quarter of the year. So passing their fourth quarter against St. Louis when they scored 27. Kayla King with a back-breaking, buzzer-beating bucket. Home run. He had not talked a lot about her, but don't you dare forget about her. Scruggs rejected by multiple Hokies. Sonny Allen, Kitley were both there. Did you say buzzer beating bucket? I like that. Dude, you're coming up, man. You're a real wrestler. You got all the time. Give me something for this. Namor gets it to Kitley like she's done so many times before. And Liz pays it off. That's 10 assists now for Georgia. And Kitley's got 25 points. I like that. Number one in the ACC in assists for the number three score. A two-time player of the year. Two-time All-American. The Hokies are going to be tough to beat. But here come the Deeks. I think Kenny Brooks might say after the game that he's glad that Wake pushed them the way they did tonight because they have just been absolutely clowning on foes over the past five games when their last five by over 200 total points. Yeah. Watch the double team, triple team actually. And you kick it away and get King is tied for number one as far as three-point basketball is really team. Watch this, high post area, just a mid-range jumper. You said she's worked on it over and over again. You can see what the practice will do, but you're exactly right. This was a good test for them because a game against NC State is going to be no joke. It's going to be close. Man, you're going to be surprised by results all across the league. You know, Pittsburgh lost by 50. 50. I can't say 50. I know. I should just say 50 because I'm not cool. They lost by cool 50 just on say New it. Year's Eve. Pitt was down 12 nothing tonight. Down 28-12 against Notre Dame. It's a one-point game in the fourth quarter, though. And Deeble says we're not done yet. The Deeks back within eight. Trying to put pressure on the basketball. Deeble's the fourth Deacon in double figures. Under a minute. Williams called for a reach. Deeks have still a couple more fouls to give. Deeble matches her season in career high. Three-point baskets are third. And again, it was a good look, so you can expect a couple more fouls. But again, this is a very fundamentally sound 
Virginia Tech team, especially down in the last two minutes. Quick call on Scruggs. Fourth on Scruggs. Third team foul. I mean, this is a great free throw shooting team. You really need a steal. Yeah. But the foul given by Harrison will shove on Amor. Number two on Kaya. You know, and, and I guess you say you've got to try to foul. you got to stop the clock. But when you have a team like Virginia Tech, first in the conference, as we've talked about, 81%, you know, you're shooting free throws. I don't know that it's always going to be good, but you've got to stop the yeah. clock. You have to. And, and the officials understand it, and it's okay. It's gonna be touch foul. We'll get the call. And now we gotta make free throws. And you got Haymore going to the line. And okay, so she's not perfect. She's only ninety percent. You enjoyed that a little too much. I did. I did. I did. I mean, I'm trying to keep up with you. What did you say? The bounding from down alley, or what was it you said a minute ago? It wasn't that. It's something. Like that. One for two. Nine point game. 50 seconds left. 50 seconds left. There you go. <laughs> Inside, Coles over Kelly. Nice Seven point goal. game. Oh. Usually Coles gives you that drop it. Steal in the backcourt. Harrison sneaks in, but her shovel pass to Scruggs wasn't handled. And Virginia Tech recovers and will shoot free throws. 32.7 left. I'd be curious to, to see what Megan Jebbia says after this game. She's had a very similar refrain after many of the Deacons' losses over the past couple months. She has talked about the progress that this team is making, how the effort is there. They continue to battle. The shots haven't always fallen. This is their best offensive half of the season right here, and it's not close against the top. Forget what the ranking says. It's a top 10 Virginia Tech team. It's a team that was in the Final Four last year. That very well could have won the national title if the shots had fallen down. Battles that Wes Moore and Kenny Brooks' teams have had going head to head. Fortunate to be courtside for a couple of them. Excellent defense by Eck blocking the Devil three, and that should just about do it. Deeks are not going to foul. Virginia Tech gets their season average 82. The fans were here early, about an hour before tip off. There were several hundred Hokie fans in the house here in Winston-Salem. They saw their team get tested for the first time in a while. But the reigning ACC champs looking strong again. And the Hokies get the job done tonight by an 82-73 final tally.